I have a drawing open, started from a template. Now I have a survey database into which I loaded an FPK file. Of course, I already had my figure prefix database and all that whiz bang stuff all set up properly. I process line work, so I have a set of figures. We're going to take a quick look at survey queries and what they do. You'll notice. If I select everything in my drawing, use Control A, I have nothing in my drawing. So when I imported my survey database, I didn't put any points in my drawing. I haven't generated any figures, but I can still get a really good assessment of what's inside my drawing. So let's, for example, create a new survey query, which brings up the survey query toolbar which has got some nifty tricks in it and we'll just do the simplest most typical one I want to see what all points look like I want to see what all figures look like and while we're at it let's sort the points by elevation that'll give me a good range right away of the elevation range in my data and we'll check figures by the length of the vertices not the number of vertices as we shall see and I can preview that in my drawing and immediately I get to see all the stuff that's in there if I hop over to the geolocation tab so I can leave stuff up interactively and take a look and that's where I am in the real world which is uh, pretty slick stuff from this I can display in the editor. I can see that my elevation uh, starts at 314, runs all the way up to the mid 380s. In terms of my figures, you see here's my longest ones. I can actually preview. That's my center, all of my center line shots. So I can actually uh, see what going on inside the data still have nothing in my drawing and nothing on my sleeve which is incredibly useful if you watch the deliverables video you'll see that we employed uh, this query which is called centers which finds uh, monumentation and those CRN shots preview that in the drawing and from these shots I built a best fit alignment we could also, of course, uh, build best fit alignments from a combination of the flow lines on one side and the flow lines on the other. So it's real quick and easy to uh, use can queries to evaluate your da data and build important stuff inside your drawing. And any one of those queries, so we're on FL2 here. I can actually insert to, into the drawing uh, that would do both points and figures if it was in there. Or I can uh, say I would just like the, the points that are related to that query inserted into the drawing. So it gives me, survey queries give me a lot of facility to get to lots of kinds of data. Let's uh, hop down to this road surface one. We could actually take a look at it quickly in the editor. And this is a figure based one. So it's finding the center lines, paint marks, stuff basically inside the roadway, inside the query. I can add this to a surface. We'll just create a new one, leave it called surface. Uh, I'll change my surface style to one that generates slope arrows. So I can take a look at this real quickly. I'm just going to reference what's in the survey database. Done this before in another more detailed uh, video that's up on the web. And surface properties will go to the build definition. Cut down the length of the triangles. Make things a little bit prettier. Let's just make this 75 feet. Apply. Rebuild my surface. Now I actually have the surface. I can once again preview where those flow lines that made that data 
were in the drawing and take a look and uh, peruse my basic surface really quickly, all built from the survey data, contours, slope arrows, etc. Uh, looking for problems that I may have later in my surface editing. I don't need the surface at all, so we can simply let's just do an undo back here. Go back to where we started. So once again, getting stuff done, being able to visualize what's in your surface is the most important thing about a survey query. In terms of core important details, let's just start a new one here. If we use all, we've seen the result of that already. That has no other properties. But if I use by query, I have a range of all the properties defined in your survey database. I'm using the generic Civil 3D one. You could add your own properties. These you could query any added properties. You can uh, actually query as well. You cannot sort by any added property. So we can find points by number and do all that kind of stuff if that's what you need to do. Notice all the types of point data are also expressed and can be queried inside the database for a value. There are number values and you'll notice the operator list is different whereas if I pick uh, the description of a point I will get mathematical operators as well as text operators. There are limited wildcards supported. Only two real significant wildcards are supported uh, because we're dealing with the values as though they're blob text or giant text string, which is what the description field can hold in a survey database. We can look for something that's li and use the underscore character, which will replace any any value and uh, preview that so that will find what sort of points let's look at the points that it looks for so it finds lights notice it contains it's not really explicit uh, about what it does not contain however you can uh, be a little cute and do things like I really only want lip with a space with anything after it that would generate me a different result I'll preview that Oops. and that produces nothing so if it's got the space how about if we give it an underscore for ones and twos etc a space and then anything after it and preview that in the drawing and let's look at that in the editor and we can see that finds my lips lefts and rights with anything after my space but does not find simply lips all by lip two for example all by itself so once again we can edit our query and just say it starts with lip and something and a space don't forget my space is still in there and preview that in the drawing and display in the editor and that pretty much gives me the exact same result so the use of your wild cards you got to be careful of the use of the wild cards whereas if we start with lip anything and preview that in the drawing now we got lips and get both lefts and rights if we want to exclude uh, the twos and only get the ones easy enough to do the description contains a one and preview that in the drawing and now we got 
all of the ones displaying the editor that updates and we got all the ones so pretty easy to uh, make queries to get explicitly what you want but you do want to check the results of your query in context so notice that points and figures are two completely separate things so I can say preview that in my drawing there's all my figures and a selected set of points there are really two queries being constructed in a survey query one for points and a completely separate one which can be completely independent so I have points and all figures we can do a separate figure query so let's get our points right and say we like the flow lines again on the one side and turn off the figures for a moment check make sure I got those right now I'd like to do a query that starts with TC's I preview that in the drawing there are no figures that start with TC so let's check all and display that in the editor and look at my figures ah it's not the description of a figure but the name of a figure we want query and we want figures that notice the default is contains which will match it in any part of the string we want it with starts with and TC's and we'll use one so here we're looking for flow lines that contain only one and figures that start with TC1 we'll display that in the editor and preview that in my drawing and so now I can actually look at uh, my flow line points as they relate to one side of the street my flow lines for example should always stay inside of there of those TC shots which they or actually appear to do for the most part so you could use the query to be pretty explicit long as you pay attention carefully to the details and look at different forms of data uh, to compare things which is incredibly useful inside of Civil 3D we can uh, zoom to any one of these as well the odds are for queries you're probably going to want to have a standardized set of queries since your figure names and your point descriptions your survey codes are going to be used and reused in project after project these queries that we've previewed before and preview that one in the drawing while my center points again just to review are actually saved inside the survey database so you can't really lose them however to get them out you'll notice there's my centers in my list I can uh, open a file externally or right click on centers and save the query to an external file which is a QML file it's a pretty good idea to work yourself up a library so we can open queries from a library by default you'll notice they start in your project directory for your survey database which might make some sense but isn't too friendly in terms of sharing the stuff around I'll just go to a local folder this can be a network folder and I've got a queries folder here and that queries folder I've got a whole bunch of uh, canned queries and now I can add that current folder to my places which is the list on this side or add it to 
the sublist of flavors. We'll just add it there. So now I have queries as my current place. And we'll cancel out of there. Yes, I want to save the places list. So now when I want to open from a file or bring it from a file, I have my queries folder and just bring in the, the one. Notice it doesn't automatically import it to your database, which is really good news. Still works. If I have a completely different data set, I will get obviously a different result. My queries can be stored externally and you can refine them. Notice I try to use a naming convention and descriptions and we'll talk about that in another video. So in this video we've seen how useful survey queries can be to make your job of Q&Aing all that data and getting that data into the proper kind of feature in AutoCAD Civil 3D.